Why do y'all keep tagging me in this crazy stuff? Did you know that there was 10 books that were removed from the Bible that if you taught them or owned them, you could be killed? By who? The Pope's secret force of ninjas? Get your pens and paper out, because these are the books you could be lynched for for owning today. Lynched? I got copies of all sorts of books that were not included in the canon. No secret church squad has pulled up on me. The Gospel of Mary the Magdalene? That was never included in any Orthodox canon. The Gospel of Philip? Also never included in the canon. The Gospel of Thomas and the Tale of the Twin? Nope. The Book of Enoch? That's still part of the Ethiopian canon, and last time I checked, Ethiopian Christians were not being rounded up and executed. There is, however, no evidence that the Jews included it in the Tanakh. See this video for more. The Secret Book of James? Gnostic texts were never part of the Orthodox canon. The Apocalypse of Paul? Probably date to the 4th century, and no, not included in the Orthodox canon ever. Letter of Peter to Philip? Again, Gnostic documents were not included in the Orthodox canon. Are you just assuming because an ancient document existed it was somehow part of the canon at some point? The Apocalypse of Peter? Finally, you got one sort of right. It's true a lot of early Christians did accept the Apocalypse of Peter as authoritative, but it was ultimately rejected because it likely contains heresy, there's no evidence it was written by Peter, and it was not necessary to teach the faith that the apostles handed down to us. But it was rejected after the long process of the formation of the canon, and you're not going to be killed for owning a copy. The Gospel of Truth? And we're back to being completely wrong. And Gospel of the Egyptians? Gnostic documents were not included in the Orthodox canon. The biggest problem is he is assuming there was just one canon. Various Christian groups disagreed on what should have been included in the canon to teach the faith that was handed down from the apostles. Ultimately, most Christians settled on the canon of St. Athanasius the Great, which is the canon we have today, because it seemed to encapsulate the Christian faith best. And I'm glad it took a couple centuries for the canon to develop, because it shows us the early church was trying to use their reason to try to figure out which books would best encapsulate the Christian faith. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Blown aneurysm? Yeah, because you're going to probably make me.